Hi, I'm Barbara. Before I dive into my story, please like and subscribe for more. Now let me take you back to the day that changed everything. It was my wedding day, the day I had dreamt of since I was a little girl. The sun was shining, the birds were singing, and I was about to marry John, the love of my life. Everything was perfect, or so I thought. As we stood there, exchanging our vows, I noticed my sister Linda, whispering and giggling with a cousin. I tried to ignore it, focusing on John and the beautiful moment. But as we walked down the aisle, Linda's voice rang out, loud and clear. Can you believe she's marrying him? I mean, talk about marrying down. He can't even afford a decent suit. The words hit me like a ton of bricks. The murmurs from the crowd were deafening. I felt John squeeze my hand, a silent reassurance, but I couldn't let it slide. Not today. Linda, can I talk to you? Now. My voice was steady, but inside, I was a whirlwind of emotions. She rolled her eyes, following me to a quiet corner. What's your problem, Barbara? Can't take a joke? A joke? You call humiliating my husband on our wedding day a joke? I couldn't believe her audacity. Come on, Barbara. Everyone knows it's true. He's poor. You could have done so much better. That was it. The last straw. Linda, I want you to leave. Now. You can't be serious, she scoffed. I've never been more serious. Leave my wedding, Linda. You're not welcome here. Just as Linda started to protest, our mother stepped in. What's going on here? I explained what happened, expecting some support, but I couldn't have been more wrong. You're overreacting, Barbara. She's your sister. And it's just a harmless comment, my mother said, siding with Linda. No, Mom, it's not harmless. It's hurtful and disrespectful. I won't tolerate it. You're choosing him over your own family? Her tone was incredulous. Yes, Mom, I am. He's my husband, and he deserves respect. The argument escalated quickly, drawing curious glances from the guests. My mother's face was a mix of anger and disappointment. Fine, if that's how you feel, we'll leave. And just like that, they walked away, leaving me standing there, heartbroken but determined. I turned back to John, who had witnessed the entire ordeal. You okay? His voice was gentle, filled with concern. Yeah, I'm okay. I'm sorry you had to hear that. Don't be. You stood up for us, for our future. That's all that matters. He pulled me into his arms. I love you, John, and I won't let anyone ruin this day for us. As we walked back, hand in hand, I knew things would never be the same with my family. But in that moment, all that mattered was the man beside me and the life we were about to start together. The rest of the wedding went by in a blur, a mix of joy and underlying sadness. But I knew I had made the right decision. Standing up for John, for us, was the first step towards a future where I refused to be surrounded by negativity and toxicity. It was the beginning of a new chapter, one where I was finally taking control of my own story. The days following the wedding were a whirlwind of emotions and gossip. Word about what happened with Linda and our mom spread like wildfire among our family and friends. People were picking sides, and the phone wouldn't stop ringing. It was exhausting, but I had John by my side, and that's all that mattered. Can you believe Aunt Martha? She actually said we should apologize to Linda, I said to John one evening as we sat in our small but cozy living room. Apologize? After what she did? No way, Barbara. You did nothing wrong. His unwavering support was my rock. I knew things were tough, but I also knew we'd get through it together. One day, as we were having breakfast, John's phone buzzed. It was an email about his small business, a little tech startup he'd been nurturing for months. His eyes widened as he read it. Barbara, you won't believe this. We just landed a big client. This, this could be the break we've been waiting for. My heart leaped with joy. That's amazing, John. Your hard work is finally paying off. This was our chance, a way to build the stable and happy future we dreamed of. We spent the next few weeks focusing on the business, putting all the family drama behind us. John's business was thriving, and with each passing day, our financial worries were easing. But just as things were looking up, Linda called. I hadn't heard from her since the wedding. Barbara, I... I've been thinking. Maybe we started off on the wrong foot. I want to make things right. Her voice was calm, but I could sense the insincerity. I remembered the hurtful words, the pain she'd caused. Linda, it's not about starting on the wrong foot. It's about respect. Something you showed you have none of. 
But I'm your sister. Families forgive and forget, right? I sighed, the weight of her words heavy on my heart. Not this time, Linda. You crossed a line. I can't just forget what you said and did. The call ended with Linda trying to argue, but I was firm. It hurt, but I knew I was making the right decision for myself and for John. Our mom tried to reach out too, echoing Linda's words about family and forgiveness. But like with Linda, I stood my ground. Mom, I love you, but I can't keep allowing this negativity in my life. John and I are building something here, and I can't have it undermined by constant criticism and disrespect. It was hard drawing these boundaries with my own family, but it was necessary. John and I were creating a life filled with positivity, success, and love, something I hadn't realized was missing until now. The chapter closed with us, stronger than ever, looking towards a future that was bright and full of promise. The rift with my family remained, but I was at peace with it. For the first time in my life, I was prioritizing my own happiness and well-being, and it felt empowering. John's business success was just the beginning, and I couldn't wait to see where this new path would take us. Life was bustling along for John and me. His business was booming, and for the first time in a long while, I felt genuinely happy and secure. But just as I was getting comfortable in this new chapter of our lives, Linda showed up at our doorstep, unannounced. I've been seeing how well you and John are doing. It's impressive, Linda said, her eyes scanning our living room, which had a few new furnishings thanks to John's success. Thanks, Linda. We've worked hard for it, I replied cautiously. I know I haven't been the best sister. I, I'm sorry, Barbara. I want to make things right. Her apology sounded rehearsed, lacking genuine remorse. The memories of the wedding day came flooding back, the pain still fresh. Linda, your words at my wedding were not just hurtful. They were destructive. It's going to take more than a few words to fix that. She seemed taken aback. But we're family. Can't we just move past this? It's not that simple, Linda. I've changed. What I tolerate has changed. I'm not willing to brush things under the rug anymore. We stood there in awkward silence, the air thick with unspoken words and tension. Our mom called later that week, her voice laced with hope. Barbara, I heard Linda try to apologize. Isn't it time to forgive and let bygones be bygones? Mom, it's not about holding grudges. It's about respecting myself and the life I'm building with John. I can't keep allowing negativity to disrupt our peace. But she's your sister, and I'm your mother. Doesn't that mean anything? Of course it does. But it also means expecting a certain level of respect and understanding, which I haven't received. The conversation with Mom ended on an unresolved note. She couldn't see my perspective, and I wasn't going to compromise my peace anymore. John was my rock through all this. You okay? He'd ask every time these interactions left me drained. Yeah, I'm getting there, just realizing how much I've put up with over the years. Hey, I'm proud of you, Barbara. Standing up for yourself, for us. It's not easy. He was right. It wasn't easy. But it was necessary. For my own well-being. For our future. This chapter of my life was about growth, about understanding that sometimes, moving forward meant leaving certain things behind, even if those things were family. As I continued on this journey, my relationship with John only grew stronger. We were a team, facing the world together, building a life that was healthy and happy. The attempts at reconciliation from Linda and Mom were part of my past, a reminder of the strength I had found within myself. I realized that moving on didn't mean forgetting. It meant learning and growing from the experiences. My emotional growth was evident in the way I handled things, no longer allowing myself to be swayed by guilt or obligation. The chapter closed with a sense of peace and empowerment. The journey wasn't easy, but it was mine, and I was proud of the person I was becoming. John and I had each other, and that was more than enough. The road ahead was uncertain, but I knew one thing for sure. I was ready for whatever came next, armed with newfound strength and clarity. The day of the big celebration arrived. John and I had decided to throw a party to mark the success of his business. It was more than just a celebration of financial achievement. It was a celebration of our journey, our struggles, and our triumphs. As we prepared for the party, I couldn't help but reflect on everything that had happened. My relationship with Linda and Mom, the hurtful words at the wedding, the attempts at reconciliation. It all seemed like a distant memory now, a chapter in my life that had closed, 
allowing a new one to begin. Everything looks amazing, Barbara. You've outdone yourself, John said, admiring the decorations. Thanks, love. It's a big day for us. I wanted everything to be perfect. The guest began to arrive, filling our home with laughter and chatter. Friends, colleagues, and some family members who had stood by us through thick and thin. But notably absent were Linda and Mom. I had made the tough decision not to invite them, a decision that wasn't taken lightly. Hey, Barbara, I noticed Linda and your mom aren't here. Is everything okay? Asked my cousin, a hint of concern in her voice. Yeah, everything's fine. It's just... Some things are better left in the past. Today is about celebrating the present and looking forward to the future, I replied, a sense of conviction in my voice. The party was in full swing, and John raised his glass for a toast. I want to thank each and every one of you for being here today. This celebration isn't just about the business, it's about the journey. And I couldn't have done it without my incredible wife, Barbara. She's my rock. Cheers and applause filled the room. I felt a surge of pride and love. Looking around, I saw faces filled with genuine happiness and support. This was my family now. The family I chose. The family that chose me. As the evening went on, I couldn't help but reflect on the journey that led me here. The pain of the past had shaped me, but it didn't define me. I had grown stronger, more resilient. I had learned the importance of setting boundaries, of standing up for myself and my loved ones. Barbara, you seem deep in thought. Everything okay? John asked, wrapping his arm around me. Yeah, just thinking about how far we've come. I've let go of so much pain, and now I'm just... happy. That's all I've ever wanted for you, Barbara. To see you happy. The night ended with laughter, music, and stories shared among friends and family. As the last guest left, John and I sat together, taking in the quiet of the night. We did it, Barbara. We really did it. Yes, we did, John, and there's so much more to come. That's the end of Barbara's story of triumph over toxic relationships. What do you think about Barbara's decision not to invite Linda and their mother to the celebration? Would you have done the same in her shoes? Or would you have chosen a different path to resolve the family conflict? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Let's get a discussion going. And if you enjoyed this story, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more. Your support means the world to us.